And thanks for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, early on in the week, we spoke to Mervyn Abrams, the program coordinator of the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group. And they had conducted a study showing that between March and May this year, the price of essential food items had shot up by 30%. And this means that South African consumers are now paying substantially more on groceries since the lockdown began in March. Now, the study also indicated that the prices of staple foods such as rice, cooking oil and vegetables increase substantially and that the poorest of the poor are the ones who suffer the most as a result of these increase, uh, increases. Now, can South Africans do anything about the situation? We join now uh, by James Hodge, the chief economist at the Competition Commission, to talk about this further. Uh, James, thanks so much for speaking to us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. So has the Competition Commission recently received any complaints with regard to the increase in food prices? Oh, absolutely. And, and right from the start of the state of disaster and lockdown, um, we instituted an internal program to, to look at food prices and inflation because probably the biggest set of complaints are around food prices, not face masks or hand sanitizer. Um, and so we have been very proactive to try and contain what has been in big food price inflation at the beginning of the COVID uh, shutdown. So uh, people have been saying, James, uh, that they had more heads to uh, uh, feed, as it were, especially with children not going to school, many adults not going to work, working from home. Uh, would this have caused enough of a demand for food prices to soar in any way, shape or form during the lockdown? Uh, because the question then becomes, why do we think the food prices are increasing by so much? Look, I think the stress on consumers is immense because many people have lost income. As you rightly say, school kids weren't going to school, school feeding schemes weren't operating initially, um, and so the pressure has been huge. But there has been, you know, probably a lot of, um, let's say, economic factors that have caused the food prices to go up initially. The good news is that some of those are reversing. So, so one of the biggest factors was the RAND just um, depreciated by 30% from, from February. So it went from around 15 RAND to the dollar to 19. And that affects things like rice, wheat, which are all imported products. Uh, and so those started to escalate in price. What the commission did at the time was engage with the, the food suppliers um, in the industry during lockdown. And, and push out any cost increases to later on. So we are seeing some of that come through now. But now that the RAND is, is recovering slightly, we expect that some of those price increases should be reversed and, uh, and some relief to consumers. I think on, on fresh produce like potatoes, um, onions, tomatoes, it's, it's been about panic buying at the initial lockdown period. But even those are starting to stabilize now and prices to come down. So we're hoping that uh, there is some relief at hand for consumers. But at the Commission, we're certainly you know, engaging with retailers, with food companies, to try and ensure that those cost decreases now get passed through and we get that relief as soon as possible. And speaking to those engagements, uh, James, uh, could price fixing possibly be uh, a factor in the increase of food costs as we are seeing at the moment? Look, it's something that we were alerted to and were concerned about at the beginning of lockdown, and we engaged with fresh produce markets around the country. Certainly, you know, our investigations into food markets is not over. And, and I think what has happened during this lockdown period has raised our interest in, in whether there are problems in the food, food chain. I mean, we're always, and you as consumers are always quick to notice that prices go up very fast but don't seem to come down at all. Um, and it's something that concerns us. We've already started to see a little bit of that with retailers where, where we've had consumer complaints and investigated and seen that the costs have come down, but prices haven't. So I think important at this stage is, is that consumers remain vigilant. A good part about this crisis is, is that I think consumerism in South Africa has really lifted off. And that helps alert the commission to, to what's going on and directs us. Um, so as long as consumers continue to be vigilant, we, we can do our job and, and uh, prevent that from happening. 
we hardly ever see prices going down, you know, whether it's uh, as a result of the lockdown or any other time. We, we hardly ever see that, James. You know, is this something that the Competition Commission has looked into at all? Look, it's certainly something that, that we have looked at in the past and we've got increasing focus. Um, as I said, I think food markets are going to be an important area of investigation for, for this year and right now. So in the retailers, we have found that, you know, they're very quick to put prices up as soon as they're alerted to a potential price increase by suppliers, um, but uh, very slow to bring it down again. And that is a problem in the market. We've seen complaints this week from, from even farmers who have said that, you know, prices are coming down at fresh produce markets, but they're not seeing it on the shelf at all. So it is an issue with retail and something we have to address and get right. Are there any um, ways in which the Competition Commission or government uh, can actually make sure that we do see those price reductions if indeed it happens elsewhere at the markets? Uh, or is it entirely up to market forces to regulate these themselves? No, I think at the retail level, we've effectively used these price gouging regulations and will continue to use it. So if retailers don't pass through those cost increases, we will cite them for excessive pricing and take them to the competition tribunal and find them. So it is something we can do something about. Um, I think within the fresh produce markets, you know, those markets, we just need to ensure there's no collusion and cartel activity amongst the, the sellers and the agents. Um, but those will fluctuate with supply and demand and naturally do. Um, so there's maybe less we can do about that apart from building um, agriculture in the country and bringing down some of the costs of inputs for farmers. Um, but at the retail level, there's a lot we can do. So, uh, James, I'm not sure whether you've actually seen it. Uh, and if you have, though, what's your opinion on the study conducted by the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Organization? Um, I have seen the study and we have engaged with them as well as the uh, DTI has, has done the same. Um, I think it's important that these studies are done because they look at what consumers are actually buying in the shops they're actually buying from and enable us to keep track of what's going on in the economy. So that study has been useful and, and we've taken it on board. Um, I think, you know, what it does show is that some items did go up enormously and, and once you break it down, it is many of the items that uh, saw, saw the, the, the sort of imported price increase, so rice and, and wheat, which feeds into your flour and, and breads, um, as well as some of the staple fresh produce like potatoes went up dramatically in the early phase. But what we've also seen even in that study is that this has stabilized probably through May. Um, so the overall basket is up about 8%, which is a lot for a few months, mm. uh, make no mistake. We're hoping now through June that now we're seeing prices coming down in fresh produce markets and uh, with the rand appreciating that that will start to feed through and we'll get some relief for consumers. I think it's still, you know, keeping track of prices is one element, but as the study also rightly says, consumers are under enormous pressure at the moment um, with loss of income, additional mouths to feed. So other efforts um, through our government that are happening already around that are critical if we're going to, to ensure that consumers survive this period of the crisis. So, uh, James, just as we wrap this up, you said you did receive uh, numerous complaints. Are you able to just give us the specifics in terms of how many, uh, who's involved, uh, who are these complaints against, and uh, at what stage are you in terms of your investigations? So we've probably received um, over 500 complaints around food products. Um, you know, typically they will involve many of the national chains because that's where people shop, as well as some of the independent stores and wholesalers. In, in many instances, there has been a cost increase. And that's why I mentioned earlier, you know, unfortunately with the crisis globally, the depreciation of the RAND, as well as some countries starting to ban exports of food products, which pushed up global prices in order to protect their own consumers. Um, that has had a ripple effect. And so many of the price increases that were complained about were the result of, of cost increases. 
we have taken up a number of them and, and, and sort of engaged in, and, uh, with, with the retailers. But I think more, than, more importantly is we've kept a dialogue open with the big national chains and many of the smaller traders in order to make clear that any price gouging in this period will be um, dealt with you know, in a manner that, that will result in, in fines and a lot of brand damage as well. So that engagement and advocacy actually has been an important element. As I mentioned, you know, big food companies absorbed the cost increases as the rand depreciated through lockdown, kept back on, on, on increasing their prices, even though their costs were going up. And that has helped as a short-term measure. We're still engaging with those companies and will continue to engage to ensure now that, that as costs come down, we see that filter through as well. So, so certainly... It is a very active enforcement in this area. We see it as critically important and will remain important, I think, for the rest of this year. Well, James, thanks so much for speaking to us here on Morning Live. Uh, James Hodge is Chief Economist at the Competition Commission, and we were talking about the recent study uh, that shows that food prices on basic goods have increased by up to 30% during the lockdown. We're going to take a quick break.